Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures of clothes. I'm going to talk about good quality construction, bad quality construction. And I designed this video to be watched by both designers interested in better product development and consumers who want to just shop a little bit smarter. Okay, first, let's talk about fabric. Okay, I'm always going to advocate natural fibers over, you know, plastics like polyester and, you know, cotton, linen, wool, silk, hemp, and organic versions are better. Recycled versions of man-made fibers like polyester and nylon are also very good. But just match up the prices with the fabric. Okay? You should not be paying out of your nose for polyester. Okay? When you see expensive polyester, it's typically those really expensive parkas that are waterproof. They have like different coatings. They are like performance fabrics. That's really it. Like if you have like a cotton poly blend pant, you should not be spending hundreds of dollars on them. Okay? Uh, natural fiber blends are also really nice because linen is very expensive and cotton is generally less expensive and cotton linen blends can be less expensive but also have a really nice feel. Okay? So look at the fiber content before you agree to pay X dollars. Right? I want to show you this dress because I was so appalled at this quality. This is a brand new dress being sold full price at Bloomingdale's. And look at the pilling all over the bust. And it, people were like, was that one dress? No, the second one was also like that. Not as bad, but also with lots of pilling. So yeah, choosing the right fabric, the right materials is so integral to the garment construction quality. You know, try clothes on, make sure things don't itch, seams don't itch, like random loose threads are all over the place. Make sure that the finish of the fabric is high quality, things like that. The next thing I want to talk about is stitching and top stitching, especially around the neck, the collar, because that's where it's most visible because people often look at your face when you're talking or you're hoping they're looking at your face when they're, they're talking to you, right? Look at this weird, messed up stitching all along the collar, okay? No. The rest of the garment is beautiful. Look at all that sh rows of shearing and the laser cut ruffles. That stitching is awful. And then look at this bathing suit, the strap. First, the stitching is really nice. And then you get to this joint and it just goes. <laughs> and then the stitches start getting loose. And you can see how it's like loopy and loose, right? You don't want that. And then this is pick stitching, which is a special kind of top stitching. And it's like puckery and tight in some places and loose and lax in other places. Uh, no. Here's, in comparison, this blue suit where the pick stitching is even, okay? It's the same pressure, equidistant to the edge of the fabric. Nice. Look at this beautiful silk sweater. It's a woven silk with knit trims, beautiful French seams on the inside, and joined to the knit trim very neatly. And those, you know, those French seams on the inside, it's going to feel really nice against your skin. So when you have unlined things, check the inside finishings. This is the same sweater. This is the knit trim on the bottom. And they only have the knit trim in the front and so they had to come up with this special kind of join but they made it work and it looks really nice it's folded in it's clean it's smooth it's not itchy very nice another little thing that i like to see in t-shirts is a non-stretch ribbon along the back collar because you only need the front to stretch a little bit to put it over your head and the back can be non-stretch for the longevity of wear. Like you can wash it more because the neck won't stretch out too much. I hate this t-shirt so much. Reason number one, 
those teeny tiny little breast pockets that do nothing. I call these the here is my boob pocket. It serves absolutely no purpose than to point out your boob. And like the larger the t-shirt gets often, they don't grade up the size of the pocket. And so eventually the pocket looks like a nipple pocket instead of a boob pocket. It's terrible. And look how off grain the fabric is. You can see the follow the grain of the linen. It's soft grain. And you're like, what if it's bias, Zoe? I drew on this picture a bias. It's not on bias either. It's just terribly cut off grain. And you know what, though? They can do it if they want. Look at this striped t-shirt in the same fabric. Look how even, you see how the heathering is perfectly horizontal, go following the stripes and everything? So they can do it. They just get sloppy when they think they can get away with it. So watch for off-grain cutting, especially when it's really visible in the texture or print. A brief note on pockets, especially on suit jackets, on blazers, they are typically stitched down to keep its shape until you take it home. You see these stitches? You pluck them out and you can use the pocket. Moving on to hardware and closures, look at these beautiful aglets. Aglets are the little tips of your shoelaces, drawstrings, you know, just looks super high quality to have them like a really nice finished hardware like that. Look at these hooks. Feel for how sturdy they are, how well sewn in or riveted in they are. When you see buttons on coats and on jackets with thicker fabrics, you want to see a thread shank, you know, spaced. So there's room for the other fabric to fit behind the button. You don't want that button super close to the coat body. When you see that, it's typically gonna be a button that's not used. Like you know how on a lot of double-breasted jackets, some of the buttons are not used to actually close the garment? Those buttons can be sewn close to the body, but buttons that are used for all, you know, tucking in more fabric should have a thread shank spaced according to how thick the fabric is. Two things that I like about this zipper. One, it's so sewn in so well, you can't really tell where it ends. It's somewhere in here. See, it only opens to here. And two, they've wrapped the zipper tab in tissue paper so it doesn't damage garments in shipping. Always test the zipper a few times to make sure they open and close smoothly. And I love that this pocket it's on short, so there's, you know, a limit to how big the pocket can be. So the zipper is a really nice touch to be able to actually use a pocket that small. This is a beautifully sewn zipper into this jumpsuit. It's not lined, so they wrap the ends of the zipper tape in bias, and it's sewn really nicely. Here's my issue with this jumpsuit. It is $600, and I know some of that went into the beading along the bias all over the edges of this jumpsuit. And does that really, like, matter? Is it enough so that it's so beautiful and special that it warrants $600? It's like perceived value, you know? Speaking of decoration, let's talk about embroideries. The thing about embroidery is you should not be able to see what color the fabric is in between the stitches. It should be filled in smoothly and full so that you can't see what the color of the fabric is in the embroidered areas. Embroidery is costed out by stitches. The more stitches an embroidery has, the more expensive it is. So it just looks so super cheap to me when the stitches are all sparsed out if I received a sample like that, I would tell my embroiderer I need more stitches in this bird's wing. When you're looking at beading or sequins, anything that's stitched on, they should be secure. Run your hand over the surface and you shouldn't feel any loose beads or sequins kind of rolling up as you run your hand over it. Don't maul the fabric, but you should be able to feel it. And if it starts picking up, it's 
loosely sewn. And that's whether you're looking at just the fabric or your finished garment. Just run your hand over it. This is vintage. This dress is a million years old. This is from my closet, but it's well sewn. So there are no loose beads, no loose sequins, nothing. I have a mixed relationship with matching stripes and plaids at seams, but the fact of the matter is people expect it. You should expect it where it's all straight lines like this pocket and the placket, but there are gonna be places like curved side seams where it's not gonna be possible to match up or other areas of the shirt because of the way it's cut with different grain lines, the stripes and the plaids aren't gonna match up like the shoulder yoke or the sleeve cuff. Linings should be roomier and looser than the outside fabric. And in jackets, you should have like a pleat along the center back for ease. And okay, this is wrinkly, so ignore that. But I love that they have this bust fold, this bust tuck in here so that it will nicely fit around larger busts in the lining. Okay, that's a nice detail. And sleeve linings are often different from the body linings. Sleeve linings must always be a slippery material so that people wearing sweaters and flannels and stuff can easily slide their arm through the jacket. I also like this jacket lining because it has a working pocket that I can fit my whole hand and it has that nice trim in between the lining and the facing. Nice touches. Slits and vents on jackets and coats should be immaculate, sharp corners, folded lining so that there's r wiggle room on the inside, neat edge stitching so that you don't see the lining coming through the slit, okay? Very nice. One of the things I like about this red linen dress is it's unlined, so they have French seam finished the inside. Uh, the, there's no overlocking, there's no loose threads, everything is beautifully finished. Same with this button-up shirt. This is a dressier shirt. has beautifully clean finished side seams and armholes. And on more casual button-down shirts, the armholes are occasionally overlocked instead, which is fine as long as the overlock is nice and neat. Another nice thing about shirts is when they pay attention to high stress areas like the shoulder. Shoulders are a high stress area, so in this eyelet, they have an shoulder yoke lining in a cotton batiste which will lend to the longevity of this blouse a couple notes on trousers so i love the bias finishing on this fly nice much better than overlock with nice men's suit trousers tailored you're looking for a center back seam that goes all the way through the waistband and that's classically done so they can let out and let in the back seam to adjust the fit as men get bigger and smaller and so you want those belt loops on either side of the center back seam and on the inside you can see how there's plenty of seam allowance should you need to make the pants a little bit bigger around the butt. With more sporty waistbands, you're looking for a nice clean finish. You're looking for sturdy, strong elastic that will last through a lot of washing, especially if you're gonna sweat in these kinds of pants. This is like three rows of elastic finished beautifully on the inside with very nice material drawstring in the front uh, also with those nice aglets from before. And then the back pockets are reinforced with a strip of non-stretch woven fabric along the top. And that is really gonna help those pockets not start unraveling and tugging and getting misshapen along the top. Really nice touch. All right, I hope that was helpful for your product development process or 
your shopping enjoyment. <laughs> Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Watch this video a few more times to really let all this information soak in your brain. And I will see you in the next video.